All right, I thought I would just talk with you about the question of should you buy an acoustic guitar or should you buy an electric guitar? And the idea is you want both. And I don't mean 10 of each, but one of each. For me, it was a solid body electric Gibson SG standard, which I really liked. Fine guitar. And, and then later on, I got a Gibson L00 acoustic guitar for recording after I had sold my amp because as I alluded to before I got sick of uh, all the amp settings and tone knobs and pickups and I wanted simplicity in acoustic recording to focus on my playing which is what I was doing till the bridge started to come I believe and now I might be going back to electric until I make it to the next city over to get that repair done who knows the tone might come back better than ever but for now I gotta wait because I'm gonna wait till the weather gets warmer a little bit if this does have to do with humidity we're coming out of the winter now and it would be wise to um, just have it done I think while we're already in the warmer weather but not the full heat of summer, because that'll be something else. Um, it's been a long, tough winter. It's been like a spiritual winter where I'm coming out the other side of it. After, you know, that song, Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. Like, uh, get back on your feet again. Everyone wants to be your long lost friend. Well, just got back on my feet again back in November. Coming out of this winter means something. It's like, a, that's the thing about this. It's like a, symbolic almost. Uh, but obviously I wasn't gonna die, but I'm coming out of it continuing with this new beginning. I have a new job that I'm doing and I've managed to maintain from November to now with this whole, whatever's going on in the world or has been going on um, that was a big gray area with me not knowing what was going to happen next I'm sure it was for a lot of people um, but should you buy so the idea is you want both <clears throat> and what <clears throat> during that time I made a purchase and I took a gamble on my first acoustic guitar and I got a Gibson L00 Studio which is not the black one the studio walnut and it was shipped from reverb from manchester music and they sent it to me and it and i played it and the, the tone of the walnut and there was no slack on the strings like the tension was all off and it was horrendous and um, i knew i couldn't keep it and i was stuck with it so i make a long story short i had um, made it back to the shop all the way in a, a very, very, very far drive and, and traded that guitar in while paying the difference, which cost me about $700 to upgrade because they took, that's counting them taking 400 off for some, because the guitar had quality control things that I noticed. And it was like one little thing, like a ding on the fretboard, and a little thing. And they try to, someone tried to cover it with like a piece of gum or something. And so, I was like, you know, I pointed that out and I said, right after that, I said, so I read on, on your site that you, you do deals for cha exchanges or whatever, and alluding to this, um, this mark on it. And I really like this guitar, but he, so overall I paid 700 to, to go from the studio to the original model, which is like a step above the standard. See, there's an L00 standard, but this one has like these uh, open back tuners and it's a uh, subtle antiquing going on with it. So it's like a top top line new Gibson, basically. Like you can get this or you can get something that's like torrified um, where they artificially age the wood. This isn't that. This is just a Sika top. It's a new guitar. And those are new guitars too, where they artificially age them. I'm just saying mine is just a straight up new instrument and um, 
And then I noticed that little mark on the bridge next to it, which was probably another quality control issue. And then it caused me, for some reason, to lift the guitar upside down under the light, and I said, what is this space here? And ever since then, I said, well, I did the research, and yeah, it's not in good shape. So, like, I needed another headache, and I was telling my friend, the guitar was always there for me, and now I, now I gotta get it worked on. <laughs> um, so that's why you need both, because the electric guitar serves a different purpose, too. Like, you can practice real quiet and strum, bang on it. But the acoustic guitar is so much more comfortable to play. It's just... The electric seems to be like it's more made for standing up playing, primarily. And the acoustic guitar seems like it's primarily more for sitting down. So it's just my, my, my thoughts. But you need both to hone your skills on both. I'm talking about just six string instruments. I'm not saying you need a 12 string, you need a seven string, you need an eight string, you need a bass, you need a five string bass, you need, you need a mandolin, you need a violin. I'm just saying, say you're starting in music raw, you don't know a thing about music. Don't go out and get six different acoustic guitars and five Epiphones and five, ep five electric. Get one acoustic guitar, get it set up by a tech, get the strings you want on it, make sure you like it to begin with, and get the electric. But you need to know what you want to start on, going into it knowing that you're going to need both anyway. It's like buying the harmonica, it's like that. You're going to start on C to see if you can play a note. But um, you're going into it knowing you're going to need all the other keys to play. So that's what I say. You definitely, but say, which one should you buy first now? You should buy the electric guitar first. And here's why. You can bend on it. It's physically for the tips of your fingers easier to play. And when you're just when you're just starting out experimenting with bending, even if it's not perfect, you have to do it. And you're gonna be really just like the harmonica. And you're gonna be so discouraged if you try it on the acoustic guitar. And so sometimes it's just impossible. And also it, it widens what you can play starting out on the electric because um, you have a longer neck, and that's just the reality of it. So you have more frets, so you can play solos and so on. Not just solos, but you can play things that would require require a cutaway. Now you can get an acoustic guitar with a cutaway, or you can get. A sh this is where it gets complicated. You can get a short scale guitar. So now, which guitar do you get? I went for practicality. Like I was saying before, I didn't start music at a young age. I'm 28 years old. And I started playing in 2017. It's 2022 now. So what I'm saying is, I didn't start as a kid when I was being gifted all these things, but I had went through enough years on the planet to know what kind of music I liked. I had come full circle, so by the time I wanted to play, I had the right inspiration. When you're buying guitars, you need to pull from the right inspiration. So, For the electric, I was thinking, well, the Red SG is it's a good bet. Thinking Tony Iommi, Angus Young. Um, they played the SG. Solid body, electric guitar, new. And that was kind of a top of the line. No, you don't just go buy an SG standard like it's nothing. That's not an Epiphone now. That's SG standard. 
a brand new 2017 model before they changed to 61 reissues that are just never ending now everything 61 60 they just completely abandoned the the models everything 61 if you want an sg mine doesn't have the batwing guard it doesn't have the colored tuners um but it's a and it's a great guitar it's already starting to antique like the binding starting to turn like orangish 2017 this feels like so long ago but it isn't that long ago because people play for decades and I started like people that are prodigies they start when they're kids or they come from a musical family and I didn't do that I had to take my own initiative and So that was, I was, what, 24? I was about 24 or something. Yeah. I've been playing guitar for going on five years in the summer. Right? Five years in the summer? I honestly lost track, but I think it's five years. I started in 2017, so that tells you. So July of 2017, did I tell you that? But in that time, I've learned so much about guitar. I knew nothing. They put this thing around my neck. I bought it new in Guitar Center. I went with a friend named Andy. You, if you're buying a guitar, I recommend you always go with somebody else, even if they don't know anything about music. But, um, they put this thing around my neck and it felt so foreign and the SG is a heavy guitar anyway. You might think, oh, it's not a Les Paul, it's an SG, it's light. No, it's not light. SG is a heavy guitar, mine is heavy. Um, they put this thing around my neck, I didn't know what chord from uh, my elbow. And, you know, <laughs> so I couldn't play anything. So the other guy was playing it, ripping it up. And, now if I went in, I could really play something. I'd go in there, oh boy. But the point is, is that in that time period, I've learned so much about music. And I was just starting to draw the right inspirations around that time when I started playing. Think about it. Think about the videos I've done. The Everly Brothers. Um, Dion, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens. I mean, I'm drawing from the right inspirations here. You're not going to find these inspirations from other people. You're going to find people playing Slipknot or... You know... <laughs> It is what it is, man. I can't, you know, I can't change it. But, um, so that's what I think you should do. I think you should do what I did. Get both. And if it depends on your budget, of course. I don't have a limited budget, but when I was um, starting out for that first guitar, I didn't pay it off in little payments or something. No, I went in there with the cash and prepared to spend about 2000 that day, which I did. And, um, and to get the bridge fixed on my brand new year-old L00, $225, so this is not a cheap hobby. This is a real serious hobby here. Uh, and it's not just because it's an expensive hobby, but it's because you find you have to pay, get your things set up, buy new strings, and, uh, buy another amp, do this, do that, you know. This one haywire, that one haywire. Uh, so you got to use your initiative a little bit with who you're having doing the work and what, what you're actually paying for because 
I had one guy say, yeah, this was a little loose and we screwed it for you. Yeah, that takes about three seconds. Ooh, loosen it. Ooh, and here's $100. <laughs> uh, integrity is no object anymore. It doesn't mean anything. It just has no meaning at all. But once I get that guitar fixed, I will be in good shape, man. I'll be banging out some more classics. Uh, but because I really enjoyed playing the acoustic guitar more, I got it's, it's the truth. I enjoy playing the acoustic guitar more. But the electric can keep my skills from falling apart because if I didn't have it, I couldn't practice. Uh, I couldn't. Because sometimes I'll learn a whole piece or a whole song on the electric. And then when it comes time to get ready to record, I'll just get on the acoustic like it's nothing, like it didn't, like it's the same old thing. And I'll have learned it. But when it comes to recording, I don't want to be fiddling around with the, the tone and all that. Like, I just can't be bothered because my amp doesn't match my guitar. The Fender Champ 20 is a $100 amp or $200 amp. And my guitar is, is, is an expensive guitar, so it's like putting a nice guitar through a you know, little practice amp to do recording. I don't know. It doesn't. And that, that amp was popping or something. And didn't like it. Whereas if you have a good acoustic guitar that's loud enough, I do this off the phone. Even. If you have that, then. You don't need to worry about any of the third party thing of like, I don't give a hell about pedals or, or, you know, I never give a hell about pedal boards or any of that junk. I'm focused on my playing, man. That'll take me a lifetime. I don't care about that. Stupid stuff. Those are toys, man. You know, I'm, what I do takes time. I have to draw from the real inspirations. I'm not, and if you're emulating people that use pedals and you're using the pedals to play like Tony Iommi or this and that and the other, that's okay, but that's not the kind of music I want to play. I don't want to play Black Sabbath. I don't, you know. What I want to do is play like Dion and accompany myself like the great rock and rollers from the 50s because that's where my heart is. I hope you understand. <laughs> and I'm working on how many more years on the, on the harp and the halibut. So that's going to take me a while. Because I've always been intrigued by that song and I finally started breaking it down. Um, really, really intricate, fast, bluesy, like, not calling it sloppy, but it's just so, like you can't beat Wolf as a blues man. You just can't be beat. It was just the way. But yeah, um, so that's the story. You should get both, but just one of each. Because I see a lot, well for me, because a lot of people have a house full of five or six of each kind of mediocre instruments or whatever. Like three Yamahas and Epiphone and a Recording King. And, uh, and I'll have just one good one to have the value of all theirs put together plus maybe a little bit more.
and it'll continue to go up in value. And it'll continue to go up in sonic quality because these good guitars, as they get older, they, they do sound better. That's why these old ones, they're all sought after, like the old Gibsons. Why do you think that is? I mean, there's a reason for it. So why not have one that gets better with time be the one you're playing? You don't, you only need one. You only have two here. And I'm just like painfully practical, man. A lot of people don't get that. Like at work as people, like um, without the kind of integrity, like common courtesy, common, you know, a little attention to details, selflessness. And that's why you get guitars with the bridge hanging up, because it's like, it's not humidity, that guitar had quality control issues from the beginning. People aren't quick to take $400 off of top of the line instrument. You can't go through your whole life like some detective trying to. You just gotta do the best you can, you know. You can't do much more than that. Um. And I do have a Fender Dreadnought over there that I got for an old pair of shoes and classical. Those are more like things I acquired because at the time I was selling a bunch of things on Massachusetts Marketplace and now nothing's selling at all. I've got a few old things listed, nothing's, nothing's budging, nothing at all, which is good because I'm back to work again, but nothing is budging. Um, but at the time I, I let it met up with a guy and I was giving him all my old skateboard equipment for things. He gave me an Epiphone Les Paul and a Yamaha acoustic guitar and I sold those real quick. Those guitars smelled horrible and um, it stunk up the whole house. So thank God I was able to get rid of them fast. And now I'm stuck with this. And later on we did another transaction and now I got this Fender and a classical for like some old shoes. Um, and the Fender's not bad if you lose, put some new strings on it. But as far as new purchases, you're almost tempted to, when your guitar has a problem, well, I'll go out and buy another one. <laughs> and then that one will come along and have a problem. Next thing you know, you got five of them that have a problem. So I'm just going to get this one Gibson fixed. And then. Uh, or maybe I'll have them throw new strings on the SG. Um, and then we'll just get back to, to doing it. And I'll get an amp. And maybe we'll do both. Because it's important to have both. But my honest opinion is I like the acoustic guitar better. And the electric guitar is fantastic for a practice instrument and for... It's just my kind of music, that's all I found. And I started out on the electric, but I just got to be honest. That could be subject to change, but I'm never going to join a death metal band. I'm not going to, you know. I know where my soul is with this type of music. It's like I told you, Dion, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, those, those era, Rich, uh, Little Richard. Uh, Fats Domino, Benny, and, uh, and at the si simultaneously the metal bands like the Judas Priest, the Iron Maidens, the Black Sabbath. But I don't want to play that. I want to listen to that. I don't really enjoy playing that because I, I like to accompany myself when I'm playing these songs because I like those sorts of love songs. Like the, that's what I like. I don't know why. Well, maybe I know why. I wonder why I love you like I do. <laughs> Those type of songs. Is it because I think you love me too? But yeah. So it's going to vary on the individual. And just know that 
from 2017 I'd learned so I'd went from him putting the thing around my neck and me knowing nothing to me knowing a lot about me and I don't know it all of course and I don't know it I'm not even a music theory expert I'm not even a, a incredible musician or anything I'm saying you have to look at how far you've come and you have to realize that you can't just well I'm not as good as John uh, maybe the, you know, I'm not as good as sometimes I like to mix up the names of the the best guitar players so like uh, um, I'm Eric Eric, um, Stevie Ray Clapton, <laughs> or Eric Ray Vaughn, um, or, um, let's see, what other, one of the best guitar players ever, oh, that's, uh, B.B. Badamasa, <laughs> or, um, I like Stevie Ray Clapton, well, that's a good one, um, or, let's see, what else? You got one more than that. Um, can't think of any more actually. Uh, in that vein, like that would be so recognizable. Like, trying to think. Uh, oh, it's Steve Vai. Let's see. Uh, Jimmy Vai. Stevie Ray Hendrix. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, well, but I've come a long way. I've learned about all solid wood guitars versus laminated back and sides versus USA made versus all versus different body shape double O versus triple O versus quad O. Uh, I've learned about Gibson LG series. I've learned about Martin and how they classify their guitar. All mahogany versus Sitka Spruce with mahogany back and sides versus rosewood back and sides. Special adornments versus that kind of stripped down version. Um, I've learned about all different aspects of guitars. And I got a lot more to learn, practically speaking. I went from like zero to 60 from 2017 to now. So you could tell the inspiration struck at the right time. I'm not giving up on this. But the new, this new schedule is making it hard. That's just making it challenging. But I'm saying when the weather gets nice, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be. Because the good thing about the harmonica, though, if you play guitar, you can't take that guitar with you, but I can take a harp with me. Depends on the kind of music you want to play, what your inspirations are, what your budget is, how serious you are about this, how committed you are. And practically speaking, the electric guitar is easier to play, a little bit more simple in terms of changing strings, and, and um, you wouldn't have to worry about so much about the humidifying. And, so on and so forth so start with the electric knowing later on down the line you're going to want both if you want to be a real musician guitar player uh, and of course you can get by with just one or the other but to each their own man you know that's what i say Can you please like subscribe to this YouTube channel? 
share these videos, especially the recent ones with how to play and things. Because I'm just drawing inspiration from all over the place. That's what music's about. It's about, you know, all the best musicians drew from guys who they like best. Um, and you'll see the best musicians are like culminations of their idols and who was who they looked up to at the time and we're in a pretty unique time now where things are so readily available to us and this whole idea of going way back is, is probably bigger than ever because you're not listening to a radio like being plugged in here completely doing things on your own volition but with me it was that McDonald's radio which has since changed now it's completely generic reggae tone and hey there Delilah the crap but while I was working there back then it was Little Richard and Take It Through That Hole and then they were playing you know Fat Stomper Ain't that a shame I still feel the rain And then they were playing um, uh, Let's see What else were they? Oh, Bill Haley um, In his comments I said a shake A rat and roll And then they were playing um, Let's see, who else? The, the, the Everly Brothers when will I be loved? And then they were playing um, Benny King. And then Diane has come in the land of Tom. And then boom, is the only I will see. And then um, I think another Bill Haley hit was. See you later, alligator. Mm -hmm. After all, quite the dog. See you later, alligator. Mm -hmm. After all, quite the dog. That's all. So long. Goodbye. 